This video describes a manual phase correction in topspin. Phase correction is needed after a Fourier transform because the same peak may come out as absorptive shape or dispersive shape or a mix of the two. Phase correction is converting the peak into its absorptive shape easiest for visual analysis. You may need a manual correction to make your phases better after automatic phasing. But it becomes particularly important if your experiment uses water suppression. The result of the water suppression is not only that water peak is reduced in intensity. Suppression often gives water a very distorted shape. All automatic phasing routines rely on the tallest peak in the spectrum and will fail on aqueous samples because the water peak is distorted by suppression and cannot be expected to have a good symmetrical shape. A manual phase correction is required for experiments with water suppression. To perform a manual phase correction, first I need to reprocess the dataset to remove the results of a failed phasing attempt. Type in EF on the command line. Shift the spectrum to the center by clicking the arrow up button. Roll the mouse wheel to magnify the spectrum to visualize phase distortions. Next, I will click process and adjust phase. First, let's look at the toolbar. The zero button and one button will change zero and first order phase corrections. The R resets phases back if you want to start from a clean slate. The pictures of the little ramp going up and down are buttons to adjust sensitivity of the mouse. The rightmost icon of a diskette with a blue arrow will save the result. Final blue arrow is to exit without saving. First, I will right-click the leftmost peak of my compound and select Set Pivot Point. This will be a position which will have phases adjusted first. Phase adjustment uses two corrections called zero and the first order. With the left mouse button, I will step on the zero icon, hold the button and move the mouse up and down. You observe effect on phases near the pivot point and ignore the rest of the spectrum. Your goal is to get the baselines on the left and the right of the pivot to look like they want to continue into each other. This was the zero order phase correction. Next, I will step on the one button, hold, move the mouse up and down and watch the changes on the right side of the spectrum. I stop adjusting when appearance is satisfactory. Pay attention to pH 0 and pH 1 values shown in red below the toolbar. They should be relatively small. If you see them going into hundreds, you adjust it too much. You also will distort the baseline along with your phase adjustment. In this case, click R and start over. I will redo my phasing again. Once you see the baselines near straight and continuing, you're done. Click the diskette button to save. The residual distortion in this spectrum is due to the water peak, which cannot be taken out by phasing alone. Even if you are the Imnova user, it is always worth phasing at the spectrometer, because you have a chance to reacquire if you have such a significant solvent distortion. In this case, you will use a GS tool in topspin to interactively shift the carrier frequency O1 and bring the distortion under control. After you successfully phased, the results of your phasing are saved in the ProcPAR tab in a phase section. You can reprocess now with EF and then issue PK. 
This will phase your spectrum using the values that you saved. If you create a new experiment from this one, it will inherit the phases. Saved phases are often sufficient for phasing of the future dataset. If you are using MNOVA for final data processing, phasing and topspin is still useful, because values of your phases will be imported and used by MNOVA.